Initially, I wasn't going to talk about this at all. I wasn't all that interested in it, but it seems to keep popping up on my timeline. And I honestly, I feel like a lot of people kind of have the facts skewed as to what actually happened in this entire situation. I'm talking, of course, about, I guess, now former uh, cartoon artist of the very famous weekly, daily, I don't know, I don't read the newspaper, comic strip cartoonist of the comic Dilbert. I'm talking about its illustrator and creator, Scott Adams. If you haven't seen this bubbling anywhere on any social media sites or in the news or whatever, Scott Adams went on a, quote, racist rant over the past weekend uh, that essentially got him and his entire comic franchise canceled from the face of the earth. Now, this rant that he went on was on his podcast. First things first, I think this is probably the most important thing out of this whole gosh darn story. Why does everybody need a podcast? Who the f is Adam Scott? No, but did anyone care? Did, did anybody on this entire planet know or care about who Adam Scott was prior to the alleged racism? Like everyone has to have a voice in society? No. No, we don't need to give a voice to the voiceless. Not everyone has something interesting to say. Is this it? Is this the level we're at now? We're taking life advice and interesting insights from someone that writes newspaper comic books? Are we serious here? Has anyone ever laughed at a newspaper comic strip? I know probably the majority of you don't know even what a newspaper is. Trust me, they're not good. Oh man, Sammy, have you seen the news? Antifa accidentally beheaded a kid with down syndrome because they thought he was wearing a maga hat but it turned out it was just a red ordinary red hat did i wonder what the i wonder what the the creator of calvin and Hobbes has to say about this oh man sammy did, did you see the aliens actually landed onto earth and for the past 13 days the u.s congress has been debating as to which bathrooms they're allowed to use publicly i wonder what the opinions of the early 90s cartoon Rugrats has to say about this. I wonder what his thoughts are for an hour at a time. I, I would love to know what his thoughts are for an hour and 30 block with four ad breaks. I want, to, I want to know what his thoughts are that are also coincidentally brought to you by Athletic Greens. Oh man, Sammy, did, did you hear that the Jews actually do run Hollywood and they've resurrected the frozen corpse of Walt Disney? I wonder what his opinion is on this. Okay, let's uh, stop before I get myself canceled. Oh. Ironically, that is probably an opinion I would love to hear. <laughs> My point is, why does anyone even care to begin with? And yes, the irony is not lost on me in the fact that I am currently talking into a camera hoping that people watch it. And with that being said, now that I've laid the groundwork as to why you shouldn't care about this story and my opinion on it, why don't we just jump into the story? Listen, this might be a controversial, this might be a hot take over here, but um, I think for the most part, Scott Adams uh, is not racist. You know what? I'll take you through my my thought process of this instead of just revealing what my opinion is on this from the outset. So when I initially heard about this story, um, the first thing that jumped out to me was I really did feel like he was being taken out of context, but not so egregiously where it's like, oh, this is just a bunch of media lies about it. Because I thought his basic premise rang true, and then I thought people were intentionally like skewing uh, what he actually said to fit some kind of narrative to get people to click on their websites or visit their Twitter profiles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then I also thought his solution to the problem did come off quite racist. So it was like a bit of both. He was like, eh, well, I mean, do they, I guess they cancel each other out. A little racism, a little anti-racism. What are you going to do? So just a little backstory, a little lore here. This was all based on a poll that uh, Adam Scott had read online, a poll by uh, Rasmutin Reports. I went to their website. It seems like the poll was taken down, or at least I, I could find it, but it was like the, I don't know, stuff seemed to be broken and the graphic wasn't there. So we're just going to kind of do the best with what we can here. Here's uh, the Washington Examiner that kind of reported on it. Basically, the poll was, uh, it was polling 1,000 Americans in total. So pretty small sample size as far as polls go. Basically, the poll was asking a question, is it okay to be white? Uh, it was polling, like I said, 1,000 people. Uh, out of the African Americans that replied to the poll, 
that's where things seemed a little concerning. So while it shows that 72% of people agreed that it's okay to be white, uh, even a majority of black people, 53% agreed. And that's the way this whole thing was kind of being framed initially is that like, oh, look, it's not as bad as you think it is. So yeah, like 53% of black people agreed that it was okay to be white. But I mean, like that's a pretty large percentage it's sure it's it's not the uh, the majority but i mean it's pretty freaking close so that's basically what uh adam scott was trying to get at here in this clip from his podcast which i will play for you right now so if if you know nearly half of all blacks uh are not okay with white people according to this poll not according to me according to this poll uh that's a hate group that's a hate group and I don't want to have anything to do with them. Let's pause it right there. So, yes, I could see why on paper, um, if you're not reading that in context, it can seem like a crazy thing to say. I think that I think the the lesson the lesson learned from this whole situation is uh, maybe do a take two. Uh, maybe uh, maybe podcasting isn't the the greatest format for everyone. We can't all we're never not everyone's as bulletproof as Joe Rogan and his coffee sponsors. Now, what he's trying to say here is that the percentage of black people that would say that they don't think it's okay to be white, that would be considered a hate group because they are, um, by definition, I mean, it's like they're hating a group of people based solely on their race, the color of their skin. That in itself, by definition, that is a hate group. He's not calling all black people a hate group, but I think that's what like a lot of people, and this is where I said, I think a lot of people kind of misunderstood what he was even trying to say to begin with. I, I, and I think I think if you just took that sentence and put it in a vacuum, um, it'd be one thing. So the premise he's laying out is that, listen, if you hate white people solely based on the color of their skin, uh, he would put you uh, in, a, in a hate, he would consider you to be part of a hate group and doesn't want to associate you. That's his premise. I think most people could agree with that. For the most part, people don't want to associate with other people that are racist, especially if they're racist towards your race. And I would say, you know, based on the current way things are going. The best advice I would give to white people is to get the hell away from black people. And that's where he takes a turn for the worst. I could go on and play more. Um, he kind of just keeps on that same train of thought. So like I said, I think I think when he lays out the issue that, hey, it's not a good thing that a, you know, a fairly large percentage of black people are uh, either distrusting or actually anti-white is a bad thing. I think most logical people would agree with that. But then saying um, the only solution, or the or at least a solution to the problem, would be for whites and blacks to segregate and to stay in their own areas. Um, and he goes on to cite like crime statistics and stuff. And I think that's where he's gonna he loses a lot of people too, which I think is like again pretty easy to just point fingers at and say, well, that's racism. I mean, if you look at crime statistics, statistically, black people do commit the most crimes. And I think that's just kind of incidental to a larger issue rather than like a race-based issue. Like, I don't think black people are inherently committing more crimes because of the color of their skin. I think more likely than not, because if you look at like any other metric of or who commits crimes, it's, I mean, the, the, the number one factor is poverty. People that have the means to survive tend to not turn to crime. And I think for the most part, that's kind of what people were jumping on, uh, just framing the whole thing as uh, him being this like ultra mega racist guy. I mean, Wall Street Journal reporting on it that all his publishers dropped uh, Dilbert comic. Days later, it would also be reported that all his non-Dilbert projects were dropped by his publisher. His publishing company just dropped him in general. He's management also had dropped him as well. Let's take a look at this tweet right here from Ed Krasenstein, who's like a, a whatever, he's a content creator or whatever. But I, I think um, this tweet kind of encapsulates a lot of people's opinions or their take about this um, on Twitter. He said, no, the creator of Dilbert, Scott Adams, isn't being canceled. He's getting fired for extraordinarily racist remarks. You can see in the video below, he called black people a quote, hate group. Not true, he called black people that don't like white people, solely based off the color of their skin, a hate group, which by definition is 
True. For some context, he was replying to an alt-right, uh, sorry, to a right-wing Rasmussen poll asking black people if the statement, it's okay to be white, is racist. A large portion of black people taking the poll said that it is racist. Why? Because it is a statement frequently used by neo-Nazis and white supremacist forums like 4chan, and it is essentially the pathetic battle cry of racists in America. A, there's no, that's a jump in logic. There's no way for him to know that's why black people said that at all. B, I don't think you've ever been on 4chan. C, how many racists are in America that you're bumping into that you know their battle cry? I mean, it's just the whole statement is silly. This is a huge issue I think we're currently facing in the West right now where I think data is being distributed much quicker than information is. So people mistake data for information. Hi, me from the future uh, editing this. I ended up going on a tangent and not really explaining myself very well or <laughs> even finishing the analogy. But essentially the, the difference between the two is like data, I would say is like just the raw information being thrown at you. So these are the words this person said, and then the information would be like um, adding context to it um you know how the person said it because you know there's very big tonal differences on how you can say things you can take one sentence and just say it tonally in two different ways and the sentence now has two completely different meanings and i think with like technology and the internet you just get you get so much data thrown at you that you don't really have the chance to process said data into information so then there's people espousing opinions on just the raw data which is like, it's just wrong because they haven't really processed what the data even means yet. See, the problem with today's society is that we only take pe people at face value and we never give people, especially people uh, who espouse speech we disagree with, a chance to explain themselves or a chance to try and connect on some deeper level. We just tend to throw, and I think this is a problem of the both left-wing ideologies and right-wing ideologies that they try to separate and throw people away and deem people an enemy, ultimately causing more division amongst the, the population. Scott Adams went on Hotep Jesus's uh, podcast over the weekend as well to try and try and give like a little more context as to what he was talking about. But let's take a listen to what he said and then we can talk a little more about it later. So no, it's gonna trigger a lot of people. You don't of think course. that, you <clears throat> don't think what you chose to do was irresponsible? Oh, there's a good question. Was it irresponsible? Okay. Um, yeah. Well, let, let me ask it this way. Um, it, there was a purpose to it. If you didn't know the purpose to it, it would look that way. So any, anybody who didn't know why I did it, that would be a reasonable interpretation. Yes. But if you knew why I did it, which is to broaden this conversation, because it, it's sort of until you can talk honestly about any of the race stuff, how could you possibly do anything? How can, you, how can you possibly do anything? Yeah. So the very the minimum is somebody needs to get in trouble by, like moving the envelope. So here here's what I want to say: in a world in which uh, the narrative is that white people are the basis of the problem of not only past discrimination but perpetuating ongoing systemic racism, there's only one outcome of that, which is white people are going to want to get away from that. So I would broaden it. I would broaden the conversation to say it's not about black people; it's about woke people too. So if if you're so that's like a sentiment I would say I agree with. Where um, logically, if you know through uh, you know critical race theory and all these things, we keep telling young people that white people are the source of all past discrimination and the source of all current discrimination and will be the source of all future discriminations because you know we're we're the oppressing white devils like that's just not a good thing and eventually it's going to get to a point where white people are like well i mean if we're the bad guys like well, we're just going to go go and be by ourselves and he makes the broader point as um you could extend that to not just black people that you would ex eventually would have to extend that to just woke people in general and then you're going to kind of divide the country or divide society into like woke and non-woke. And if you play these things through, that would be the logical conclusion um, if we allow the division between, um, you know, the quote woke and the quote unwoke to continue. Absolutely, I would agree with that. But, and and listen, if, if, 
if you rewatch like the original clip of him on his podcast, it, you, it does kind of recontextualize what he was saying. If you put it now, put it in the frame and the lens of him kind of doing like this uh, sarcastic commentary on what the most extremist solution would be to a very real issue that he did bring up in the first half of that by uh, talking about that poll. I just don't think he explained himself well enough and things got lost in translation. So it unfortunately made him look fairly racist. Listen, I don't I don't know Scott Adams all that well. Um, he doesn't seem, just based off you know the small amount of footage I've seen, it, he seems like a fairly down to earth person and not someone that would you know, be lying about this to try and like save his career or anything. I think he already is like pretty much at this point, like accepting uh, what happened to him. So it like what he's saying here on Hotep Jesus pocket, it doesn't seem disingenuous. It seems fairly honest that that's what he was trying to say. And I'm I, like, again, I don't know him well enough, so I will have to take him at face value. But what did you guys think? What about this whole situation? Um, do you think he was racist? Do you think he wasn't racist? Do you think that we should stop giving people podcasts. Let me know in the comments below. Okay, bye.